This is Papua New Guinea during the British annexations. And this is 1931 Papua New Guinea. This is special, not because it's the last time that there was a first contact. We've had those up until 1984 in Australia. It's special because it's the last time that the contacted did not know of the contactors. By the 1950s, anyone who had not yet been contacted by the outside world would have known it existed by the prevalence of airplanes. At the time of this encounter, New Guineans had a belief that when their relatives died, they turned white and went to the other side of the mountains. The side of the mountain that coincidentally Europeans came from. When asked about the encounter, they said, and I quote, Ah, these men do not belong to the earth. Let us not kill them, for they are our own relatives. Most humans who have ever lived have not seen an accurate world map. 439 years earlier, Christopher Columbus was sailing the ocean blue in search of India or China or an island filled with gold and spices. Two voyages and four years later, after naming the inhabitants of the new land Indians, he would come to realize that he was not in fact in India. It was at the time known that Earth was round, it was not known that Earth had more than three continents. The vast majority of people who have ever lived didn't know what Earth looked like other than from eye level. Australia and Antarctica were both discovered in the late 18th century, airplanes were not common until the 1950s as we said earlier, and the first full picture of the Earth wasn't taken until 1972, December 7th, the Blue Marble. Today, you can use whatever device you're currently watching me on and click on Google Maps and see the entire planet in striking detail. But we can't do the same with the galaxy. You see, no man-made object has ever left the Milky Way. Not even light made by humankind has left the Milky Way yet. If you had a spaceship that could travel at light speed and you launched it towards the sun, you would die instantly. And also maybe destroy the planet. We don't have a lot of consensus on what would happen in that scenario. But given that we don't have enough energy in the known universe to move even a single atom at the speed of light, a spaceship might just start ripping things apart. But theoretically, you would get there in eight minutes. If you took that same spaceship and attempted to travel the distance of the Milky Way, you would cover it in 100,000 years. There is a galaxy far, far away called NGC 3972. And if you were an alien on a planet within that galaxy, looking back at us on Earth, you would see light from the asteroid that destroyed the dinosaurs. The galaxy is 65 million light years away. The Fermi Paradox states that because of the immense scale of the universe, there must be life somewhere else, intelligent life somewhere else, that should have visited us by now. This paradox was thought up in the 1950s by Enrico Fermi. And at the time, we didn't know that there were over 40 billion Earth-like planets in our own galaxy. This makes the question of why we haven't seen anything yet even more prompt. We tend to make this assumption that alien life is going to be a lot like Earth life. That they'll just be mimics and copies and they'll have the same ecological niches that we have. But even life on Earth in one environment is incredibly different to life on Earth in other environments. Speciation and adaptation have led to a very diverse catalog of creatures. Elephants, apes, dolphins, and octopuses are all considered very intelligent and are all very different animals because they adapted to different environments. Humans and chimpanzees are both considered intelligent animals most of the time and both originated from the same corner of Africa. Today, humanity has conquered the planet and apes live in trees and occasionally man-made cages. So what happened? Well, when animals explore, it's generally to find food, mates, and territory. Territory that is then generally used to get more food and mates. When we put a man on the moon, we didn't do so so that he could find mates. When we built devices that could scour the bottoms of the ocean, we didn't do so so that we could get more food. 
We are more curious than what we need to be to survive. Human motivations are less biologically in line than animal motivations are. Our ancestors built ships and sailed to lands that they could not see from their homeland shores. Maybe the reason that we have not been contacted is because we are the contactors. And thank you for watching.